Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I am Jessica Mitchell. And I'm Rebecca Martin. And we are editors at Mother Earth News, along with our sister publications, Mother Earth Living, Grit, Heirloom Gardener, and Capper's Farmer. So thank you once again for joining us today. It is Herb Week at Mother Earth News, which means we are taking a full week to celebrate what it means to have herbs in our life in the botanical community, using them in recipes for medicinal purposes, and just really just taking a moment to uh, know how awesome they are. Mm -hmm. So as part of that, we are doing a video today where we are going to be making some herb bread. So that incorporates um, our love of herbs. We're gonna be using rosemary today. We also have some live rosemary in here. Wish you mm -hmm. could all smell this, not just the herb, but the bread that's baking here. Yeah, it smells wonderful today. And speaking of where we are, we are at a great kitchen at Washburn Tech where they have graciously invited us to use for our cooking video today, which is really wonderful. We're very excited to get started. Um, another big part of our video today is that we are going to be featuring the mock mill where we're going to be grounding our, grinding our flour, so our wheat berries to make flour, as well as showing you uh, how we can grind our herbs as well. So here's the rundown for today. We are first going to start off with demonstrating how to grind up the wheat berries and the herbs, and then Rebecca is going to take over and start making the recipe for our herb bread. And as she's doing that, we're gonna talk a little bit about why take a moment to grind your uh, flour and herbs yourself, as well as some of the benefits of that. And then at the very end, we're going to be discussing the final product, taking questions from you, and then tasting our bread. Yeah, so stick with us. It's going, we wish you could smell, actually. We wish that they had invented aroma right. um, Facebook Live videos because someday. it smells great in here. <laughs> yeah, someday they will. And just a note before we start as well, uh, today we have a special offer that is uh, partnered with the Mock Mill. So for those of you viewing, um, we have a link provided where viewers can go online to the Mock Mill website and they've set up a special offer for Mother Earth news readers, which means you will get $20 off the price of the Mock Mill 100 um, and then you'll pl also receive um, the Mock Mill Ancient Grains Kit for free. So it'll be free shipping, six year warranty, 100% money back guarantee. So if this really piques your interest, follow that link and check it out. So let's get started. So first we're going to be featuring this uh, mill. And so what's pretty awesome about this is that it has a really nice design. You have a ratchet right here where you can kind of adjust uh, the stones inside. And then when you turn it on, you'll be ready to grind everything. So we're first gonna demonstrate how to grind wheat berries. Here we have um, hard winter uh, red wheat berries. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but these are really good for uh, grinding for bread. So without further and, ado. And it's going to be very loud, so we probably won't talk um, over this. We're just gonna get right to the grinding and then shut it off and talk later. Yes, so you can take a look at as we start grinding it. So I'm gonna pour it from the top and we'll see. So you can see that comes out ready to use. Mm -hmm. That's flour. Yeah, from berry to flour, mm -hmm. um, grinding is very fast. Yeah, it it really goes very quickly, and the feel of it is very soft, um, really soft, a little warm, which is really nice. Um, but you can just see that consistency right there. They they grinds up really beautifully, um, and then quickly uh, you can do more than just wheat berries here. Um, you can grind up things like chickpeas, rice, beans, and one of the other things you can do is grind up herbs. So here we have some dried rosemary. So I'm going to throw some in, and one of the ways that we found was really helpful to grind these is to put it in with a little bit of the wheat berries and you can kind of create a, uh, a flour with the herb mixed up as well if that's how you want to use it. So I'm going to start this up again and we will show you um, how to do it with the rosemary. So 
So apart from the color, it smells wonderful, wonderful right wonderful. now. <laughs> so here you go. Here's a little bit of a difference. You can see it has a bit of a greenish tint to it. Which and yeah, and it's flavored with rosemary. Yes. So those are some a couple different examples of how you can use the mock mill. And again, um, if you are really interested in this, if this is something you think you want to invest in, we have a special offer for you. If you follow that link, you can go online, see how you can get that $20 off the mock mill 100 along with the ancient grains kit for free. So again, you can follow that. It's a special offer for Mother Earth News viewers. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we've finished this, um, we are started. going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rebecca's gonna start the recipe. We're gonna actually start the recipe. As you probably have guessed, we're making rosemary bread, rosemary flavored bread today. Um, so I believe the recipe is going to be posted um, so that you can follow it later, but I will also be announcing what I'm adding um, out loud while I'm doing it. I make a lot of bread, so I don't generally tend to measure very well. I'm pretty sloppy at home because the great thing about bread is that it just works out. Um, yes. Don't be intimidated by it. Bread at its purest, its simplest, is flour, yeast, salt, and water. So uh, we're going to add a little bit of fancy here in the rosemary rose flavoring, but you can, you know, use any other herb to do yeah. this, to flavor mm -hmm. your bread. Okay, so we're going to start with one cup of warm water. That's just um, basically warmed it to, warm to the touch. And we'll add one tablespoon of instant yeast. Now, some of you um, experienced bread makers, it's basically a scant um, tablespoon. Some of you bread makers may be more accustomed to using um, smaller quantities of yeast. Um, I certainly am. Uh, that's for a long, slow rise, but we're using a lot here for a fast rise. Mm -hmm. um, in that, I'm going to mix one tablespoon sugar and um, see if I was at home, Jessica, I would just use my finger. Okay. <laughs> but this is going to work as well. I'm just right. using, um, using the uh, measuring cup that I had the warm water in, mm -hmm. stirring it a little bit, and you can wait until it starts to foam a little bit before you do the next step. Mm -hmm. But we don't really have that much time this morning, so I'm going to go right to the next ingredient which is two tablespoons of olive oil. Right. This is going to give uh, yeah, us a really nice, moist, um, kind of a dense and chewy um, wheat bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we've got all that stirred together very nicely. We're just gonna let that sit a little bit. And um, what I'm going to do then is start in my big bowl here where I'm going to do the kneading. I'm going to start with two cups of freshly ground whole wheat flour. Mm -hmm. Now this particular recipe, Jessica, is all whole wheat flour, but yes. um, whole wheat flour tends to produce a pretty dense low rise bread. So if you like really high lofty flours, you could go with white. You can certainly sift the flour that you've just ground from your mill, or you can just use a white um, bread flour. Mm -hmm. um, nutritionally, though, white flour is not nearly as powerful as whole wheat. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm going to do two cups here. Now, as I said before, you know, if I was at home, I, I would just probably just um, not even measure this mm -hmm. because... Kind of use your eyes? I would, and I also gauge kind of what, um, you know, the um, moisture level in the bread, mm -hmm. and there are all sorts of things you can do with bread. We have tons of resources on all of our Sister Titles websites that yes, you can we refer do. to. Just Google bread, um, or go to any of those websites and search for bread and you'll find lots of recipes and advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got my um, whole wheat flour in here. I'm going to add one teaspoon of gluten, just to give a little bit more binding um, nature mm -hmm. to this bread. I think that's especially important <coughs> when we're using just whole wheat, correct? Just whole wheat because um, White bread flour is very high protein content mm -hmm. and very sticky, elastic, and that's what gluten brings to this. Um, mm. It brings structure, um, and structure allows the bread to rise, and you want that you know, stickiness as the gases form inside the dough right. to keep the rise. So we're going to enhance that a little bit by adding a little bit extra gluten to this whole wheat only recipe. Awesome. All right, we've got the gluten and flour in here and we're also going to add uh, one and a half teaspoon salt, pre-measured by mm -hmm. Jessica. Yay. And, and no special salt in particular, right? Just I don't think so. I was just using just regular salt. Right. Great. Great. Okay. 
you can stir that up a little bit if you want. Okay, now here's the really cool thing about this um, herb bread <clears throat> that we're making. We have some ground, pure straight ground rosemary mm -hmm. here. If you like your herb bread really strong, and this is pretty strong, <laughs> just cleaned out my sinuses, um, you can add, uh, you know, to taste a mm -hmm. quantity of just pure ground rosemary, dried rosemary. Um, we think that it's a little bit strong for our flavor, our taste, our palates. So what Jessica has done here is pre-ground through the mock mill um, wheat berries and dried rosemary together, as you just saw her demonstrate a little earlier. So this has um, a very um, a, a more subtle taste. Yeah. It's not overpowering, but mm -hmm. you can definitely detect the rosemary in bread that um, she's made with this. Absolutely. So we're going to put in, I guess it just kind of depends. If you were going to use this straight rosemary, we would recommend just about half a teaspoon or half a tablespoon. But we're going to put in one tablespoon rosemary ground with wheat berries. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give us a little bit more subtle flavor here, but, but still distinctly rosemary. Yes. All right, so I'm just mixing that together. Now I have my liquid mix here that I just showed you earlier. I'm going to pour that in here. And Scott here at Washburn Tech has um, let us borrow his Danish dough hook. That is a pretty rocking utensil. <laughs> it's pretty nice. He was showing me, um, you know, if you use a regular whisk, or you could just do this with your fingers and mm. make a mess, which is what I do at home. Um, if you were using a regular whisk, it would be really a mess to clean mm. up. But this dough hook is really an easy, easy thing to clean. We're just mixing it all together. Awesome. And um, there you can see it's all coming together pretty nicely. Now at this point you could use um, a mixer with a dough hook, but what I'm going to do is hand knead this. Uh, look how that's coming together already. Yeah, Isn't that, that great? great. Um, that's, that's the stickiness that we want because we want that structure so the bread can rise. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll do then after I finish kneading this just to finish out the recipe um, you would cover and let this rise for about an hour to an hour and a half. It's going to rise pretty rapidly because it's yeah. got a lot of instant yeast in mm. it. Um, then you're going to um, reshape it that's, and then let it rise again for about 30 minutes and put it in an oven 425 degrees for about 20 minutes and then lower your oven to 350 for another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's gonna make that distinctive kind of thumping uh, hollow sound when you yeah. pull it out of the like oven. Like a drum. Um, uh, like a drum. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll show you the bread at the end of the video. You can see that um, Scott did slash the top. You can use a razor blade or a really sharp knife to do that mm -hmm. before he put it in the oven for baking. That's yeah. certainly an option for you. If you don't, it's probably going to crack a little bit, but you know, it's, it looks really nice when it's been mm -hmm. slashed. It still tastes as good no matter what you do. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Jessica, I'm going to knead a little bit All while right. you're talking. I have talk. a couple of questions for you before okay. we move on. Sure. Um, first of all, they want to know if you're going to be selling the bread at the Mother's News Fair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, um, no. <laughs> Somebody said they so, bread at the fair. Maybe if we all become it. friends, we'll just kind of exchange <laughs> it as friends. That'd be awesome. I was just going to say, I can make it, but no, I can't. <laughs> but that's and great. They're intrigued by the hook where you can get the hook. Um, Scott, where can you get the hook? The dough hook, the Danish dough hook. Online. 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 Danish, <laughs> Danish dough hook should find it for you, right? Perfect. It's pretty uh, a, a distinct shape, so yeah. it shouldn't be too hard to, to find in a picture. So now, as a can I just interrupt really oh, quickly? I just I remembered that I was going to tell people. So I'm not much of a bread kneader myself. This is a really fast rising dough, mm -hmm. um, and so the kneading is helping with the gluten, helping with the structure. What I like to do personally is long, slow rises with a lot less mm -hmm. yeast. Um, you can let them rise overnight and uh, do your second rise in the morning. You can even put it in the refrigerator so that um, it, you can pull chunks of the dough out over the course of about a week. Let them, this is after the first rise, put it in their fridge, 
pull out a small, um, like a meal size mm -hmm. uh, hunk, let it rise on the counter for 20 minutes, and then bake it. And so all week long, you'll have freshly baked bread mm. for your meals. You won't have to mix it up every night. It's really great technique. That's great. So I'm sorry to interrupt. To remember that. Oh, of course. All right. So as Rebecca is kneading the dough, I'm going to talk a little bit about the big question here: Why grind fresh? because we have this big mock mill here and it's a good question. I was wondering that myself when I was trying a couple different trials with the bread loaves. So two of the big points when it comes to grinding fresh is uh, first the freshness of it and it goes hand in hand with increased nutrition. So to start off with the increased freshness, it kind of goes without saying when you have just the wheat berries like this and you just grind it up on your counter real time, it comes out warm, ready to go there's freshness right there versus if you were to pick it up in the store um, it's been sitting there for a while and of course um, the uh, flour that you'll get from the grocery store mm -hmm. um, will be kind of made so that it does have a longer shelf life mm -hmm. but again you really can't get any fresher than grinding it yourself here and part of that goes into the increased nutrition as well so the fresher the ground flour is going to be the more nutrition you're also going to have in what you're ba uh, baking so these wheat berries, as I was learning recently, um, every, you know, all of your nutrition is encased in these little guys. Um, so you have the different parts of the wheat berry, the bran, the endosperm, the germ, all of them provide you with nutrients. And the germ especially is taken out a lot of times in the processing because of the oil, it shortens the shelf life and it, the flour can become more rancid um, if you keep the germ in there. And so because of that, you end up losing a lot of the nutrition and the freshness of it if you buy it um, processed, especially as heavily processed uh, white flours, which are made to have long shelf lives. Um, so what you're doing when you're grinding fresh is that um, you do get to keep all of that nutrition. So the protein that uh, wheat, uh, wheat berries can provide, the fiber, the small vitamins and minerals that are all encased in there, you're getting all of that when you are grinding fresh uh, at your countertop with the mock mill. And so to kind of pair off with that, um, you need to remember that because it is ground fresh, you will have a shorter shelf life. And there are kind of different ways to get around that. Um, you can freeze uh, flour and that can keep in the freezer for several months. Um, fresh ground flour will probably have a shelf life of a few months, like one to three months. You can stick it in the freezer, like I said, and then the wheat berries, if you know, you're not quite ready yet to grind them up, you can keep them on your shelf or again in your freezer, mm -hmm. which I think can be almost a year, right? At, yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. Another benefit to doing this, and which is why I have a mill at home, is that I get to try very specific wheat berries, specific cultivars. For example, um, I had heard that emmer was a great wheat, E-M-M-E-R. Mm. Um, so I bought some wheat berries, ground them, made bread with emmer and a little bit of white bread flour in it, and it was Ooh. very nutty and sweet. Um, right now at home, I have white Sonora wheat mm -hmm. berries from the Arizona desert, from the Sonoran Ooh. desert. Um, that I want to try in bread. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it gives, and I could mix those, and mm -hmm. I, I'm basically, I'm controlling my inputs. I'm yes. not just nutritionally, but flavor-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also the freshness, as you said, you don't know how long that flour's been on the shelf. You don't know how many right. trucks it's been in, <laughs> storage areas. Um, so we, we're big proponents of grinding your own wheat flour. Absolutely, and the same thing goes with herbs as well. Um, it kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, with those same ideas about the wheat berries. So with herbs, they're the same thing. You know, the fresh herbs, they have so much nutrition and medicinal purposes packed in there. Um, and so when you, you grind them fresh up, you again, you get that freshness, you get it right then. Um, and again, they do have a shorter shelf life. Um, heat, light, moisture, time on the shelf, they can all degrade both um, flour and herbs. So that's something you want to look into, but you really can't get any fresher and you're going to activate a lot of those uh, nutritional components in the herbs as well. Um, so some herbs aren't super palatable. So uh, grinding it into powder is a great way to be able to eat them a little bit easier. I know even something like rosemary, if I were to just chomp on a piece of rosemary, at least for me, I would be a little like, ooh, 
All right. <laughs> um, so having it in a powder is a really great way to keep those benefits and eat it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And you can try all sorts, like you said, all sorts of different combinations Absolutely. of herb breads. Um, you could also, if you really like rosemary, um, before you put it in the oven, you could sprinkle actual rosemary spears on the top. Yeah. It would look great, but you'd mm -hmm. have to really like rosemary a lot. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> So those are a couple different reasons as to why you would want to grind fresh. Um, and again, you can kind of just take it in little bits and pieces. If you're only going to use a couple cups, yeah. that's all you have to grind. You don't have to grind all of it at the same time. And you can just let it go, um, you know, over the couple months and store some. Um, so again, if this is something you're interested in, you can use that link. Take a look at the offer for the mock mill. Mm -hmm. It is a pretty cool machine. Mm -hmm. I loved using it this past week. Yes, <laughs> it is fun, isn't it? Yeah. And the price point on the mock mill is a lot lower than some of the um, fancier models. So it's yeah. a really great entry um, piece of equipment if you're interested in baking your own bread. Absolutely. So how are things going with our recipe? Um, we are we are fine. You can see little green flecks in here. Mm -hmm. um, are we ready to show what it would look like? Risen? Um, yeah, risen. Absolutely. So this right. is uh, this has probably been rising about an hour, hour and a yeah. half, and um, it's gotten really big. It has uh, almost doubled in size, mm -hmm. and you can see green flecks in that of the rosemary too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I see that. Yeah, and is that right, Scott? About yeah. been rising about an hour. In, in the neighborhood of an hour. So we would go an hour, hour and a half maybe mm -hmm. on that. Um, he's added a little bit of oil, it looks yeah, like, inside I see the that container. In the That's going to release it a lot easier because the dough is very sticky. Mm -hmm. Remember, we added that extra gluten and um, yeah, it's it's plenty sticky. Mm -hmm. All right. my hands. <laughs> and we have some finished um, bread to show you we too. We do. All right. I'll bring this guy over. Alrighty, you can see where Scott has slashed the top and there are beautiful. green flecks visible through mm -hmm. the slash. It's a beautiful piece of bread, beautiful hunk of bread. Yeah, um, looks so delicious. And that bake, you, again, you bake that at 425 degrees for mm -hmm. about 20 minutes. Then you lower the temperature to 350 for about another 10 minutes and mm -hmm. you just want to keep an eye on it. Um, I often bake bread in Dutch oven, Dutch ovens at home, which has, it's a cast iron oven with a lid or a skillet, crock pot kind of like, pot with a lid. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly adjusting my, my speech, right? Um, it's cast iron, it's got a lid, and what that does is seal in the moisture, so when you put that bread into a hot oven, um, the moisture um, actually comes out of the bread and makes the um, crust crispier. Mm. You can achieve that same effect by spraying the sides of your oven walls during baking if you like. Yeah. If you don't have a Dutch oven. That's great. And this turned out so nicely. It's beautiful. Um, beautiful. I can't wait to try some of it. Another plug we just want to mention as well is if you're really intrigued with not just grinding your own flours, but your own herbs to use medicinally or in baking, um, we do have an article talking about that exact idea. So this is our most recent issue of Mother Earth Living, which will be hitting the stands in mid-June, correct? Mid-June. Mm -hmm. So we do have an article about in here about um, creating and grinding and using your own powdered medicinal herbs, which, uh, so we, and we also have some other um, articles, I'm sure, online that talk about things the same way. Um, we have a lot of great resources on our yes. magazine websites. Again, all of our magazines are Mother Earth News, Grit, Mother Earth Living, Heirloom Gardener, and Capper's Farmer. Mm -hmm. All of them have great bread resources for you. Yes, because we love bread here. <laughs> yes. It's really great, Jessica. I know since you've been um, experimenting with the mock mill, we've had fresh bread to eat more than one time at work, at the offices. Um, some people have, you know, candy uh, bars and donuts. We get home baked bread. It so. was really fun to be able to <laughs> use this, um, and we just get this nice, fresh flour and then to bring it into the office and to have a nice treat is just mm -hmm. the best especially great. on Mondays yes <laughs> especially so are we gonna get to try this bread yeah I think so let's I'm gonna take a plate here we'll transfer it over and then uh, we'll give it a cut and I just want to say everyone's really excited a couple of people do have the mock mill and oh, wonderful. enjoy making fresh mm -hmm. uh, bread all the time mm -hmm. oh that's so, so great that's awesome. Another point that I forgot to say, oh, and a, a component of the mock mill is, you might have noticed we had some white rice here, which again, there is such a thing as rice flour. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ways to clean the mock mill is to actually just run rice through it. Um, and 
we can demonstrate for a moment if sure. we'd like, just to kind of show what happens, but that just helps clean it out. So if you will bear with us a little bit more noise, we can show you uh, how this works. you can definitely see that color change. So now we have the whole wheat and then the greenish tint for the rosemary and now this um, white powder, which is just the rice helping to clean the mock mill. So that's another yeah. feature of that. And as we mentioned um, earlier, you can grind a lot of different um, vegetative things in your mill. However, sometimes they will gum up the works a little bit and that's why we, we clean it with rice. Absolutely. It'll get rid of that gumminess I um, think uh, we recently ground dried cranberries through the mill and that added a really great kind Ooh. of a pinkish reddish tinge to the flour that we ground and also a bit of a cranberry flavor but it did gum up the mill a little bit so okay. we ran some rice through and that was fine. All oh right, my. this is an already cut piece which looks amazing. So I'm going to transfer this over to our Definitely. plate. So as you can see, um, wheat bread is a bit denser uh, it's very nutritious, much more so than white bread. And you can also see the um, white or the green flecks of rosemary in the bread itself. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be a really nice rosemary flavor for, to this bread. It will be great for um, serving with as a savory bread with a uh, meal like um, yes. pork. Mm -hmm. Lamb, lamb would be really great with rosemary bread. It would taste wonderful. Or just eating it with butter. Yeah, which that yeah. is kind of my choice. <laughs> Mine no too. fuss. Fresh baked bread is um, one of life's great joys. It really is. So I am just cutting up a couple slices for me and Rebecca to try right now. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'll put this aside. Do we have any questions? No questions, just people are really excited that this is from uh, Fresh. Actually, we do have a question just coming in. They're wondering where you can buy the mock mill and uh, if you have a discount code, so if you can go back to that real quick. Yes, absolutely. So uh, for those of you who might have joined a little bit later in the video and are curious about where to check out the mock mill, if you're interested in buying or just exploring, we do have a link that I think we're providing, correct? It's in the comments and in the actual post. Perfect. So in the comments and in the post, you'll find a link over to the mock mill site. So you can go on the site to just explore mock mill in general, but the specific link that we uh, provided will take you over to a special Mother Earth News a reader page where we have a special offer. Um, you'll get $20 off the Mock Mill 100, and you will also get a free um, ancient grains uh, package, which has a, a couple different books, some wheat berries, um, some little kits that all come together for free. And again, it will be 100% um, money back guaranteed, six year warranty, and free shipping. So again, if this was something that really interested you, take a look around, give it a try. I know people like Rebecca um, really love mills. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a lot of great benefits for grinding fresh. Um, freshness, nutrition, controlling Trying your out input. new things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and experimenting and just having fun with it. Very much so. I couldn't wait, Jessica. Sorry. <laughs> it's very, very moist. Wow. Um, it's dense, but not overly dense um, mm -hmm. bread, like a sandwich bread. Yeah, it's very soft. Very soft, and a little hint of rosemary mm -hmm. at the end. And this oh. is pure whole wheat bread, about the most nutritious bread you can mm -hmm. um, consume. You can kind of see it's just, it just tears so mm -hmm. beautifully. <laughs> very nice job. Yeah, it's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so a special thanks again um, to Washburn Tech and to Scott for being so awesome to let us uh, use the space and also to enjoy the bread that's been made here because it has been wonderful. Yeah, made by Scott. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think that sums about mm -hmm. uh, sums up our video today. Thank you again for joining us, everyone. Uh, again, check out the link, rewatch the video, um, and just have a great day and enjoy celebrating Herb Week and possibly making some bread. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>